That's the other one as well. Fucking hell, yeah. Jody Mitchell's sick. That was the other one who rinses Bob Dylan in the uh, Rolling Thunder review. He's just been taken along and then, you know, because really fancies her. And um, she writes this song, basically, and rips him in a song. Like, basically saying, this is just a travesty to just try and woo me and then fucking play with me head. <laughs> and it's shit. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> He's just a fucking idiot. Right. It's basic, though, and this is what this is what's so funny about all those intellects who are like, oh, Dylan this and Dylan that, is that fucking um, uh, for him to have made the best music ever, and yeah, fair play, he had that earnest vision to rob, yeah, and fair play, he literally went through this like library of really sick books somebody had and just scanned through them because he was there all day and he had nothing to do. Don't think he had as much drugs or nothing, so he just scanned through it all. Entertainment. He just kept scanning, reading through these books, and um, he'd just find little excerpts, which he felt would like, give them to him. But apart from that, he is just an absolute idiot. It's like, you're just like this. If you watch anything which he does, you're just like this. But the best thing um, they do is just show how much of a fucking like, snide, full of himself, cocky prick he is. With Kate Panchett in fucking I'm Not There. John Lennon, John Lennon <laughs> rips him, mate. In his taxi, he's just rinsing. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no, he's just taking a load of skag. They're on all sorts. Bob them took a look at him. Fat events as well. John Lennon's just a huge big character. And he loves, like, like, John Lennon's really arrogant. <laughs> Big old John. Thinks he's better than everybody. And that's why he just had to, to just fuck off from it. Even just the actor of Paul was too much. Like, no, just had to fuck off. Because <laughs> that one was just too much of a battle. Um, so he went off to America. He landed it. Oh, yeah, it's bigger. Nobody knows you there. Because <laughs> they've never been ripping him in England. Because Paul rinsed him <laughs> with Ram. <laughs> and then he chilled with Bob Dylan. <laughs> All of that fucking ripness, <laughs> rips the shit out of him. Like right before, like right these two songs, he rips the shit out of him. Actually, really good Bob Dylan life song. <laughs> and then he, 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 I can't remember how he says it. You know, you'd have to watch it. It's just funny, mate. Bob's like, oh Jesus, fucking hell. Yeah. Hey, this is me, Michael. Hey. <laughs> put it on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> They're both just a couple of fucking ages. Fair play. Did some sick shit. I have to admit, they did do some sick shit. Oh, that's a shame. It's fucked up. Cynthia Lennon was lovely. That's why Paul, whether it be the actor or whether it be Paul, <laughs> he knew what to do. Right, hey, Jude. And it was like that. Lovely. That was told by the God herself. Hey Jude was written by, uh, written for John Lennon's song. Susie and Lennon.
one of the best jokes the guy ever said was, if you ever thought John Lennon was funny, Sam, um, just look at Sean Lennon, because basically what he did was just make a gay Japanese version of himself. It's hilarious. <laughs> that evil Kaiko, yo. Know, she's like, she's like, she's bad name to Japan. She's a bad name to Japan. Japan is sick. But Kevin Mira, he played football till he was like 50 something. It wasn't just 50, but 50 something. That was what Teddy Sheridan was aiming for. He gave up by like 40. Three or forty-two. A lot of people just rip your name. Oh, granddad's back on the pitch. <laughs> Fucking fuck off, granddad. It just gets in these fuckers and plays golf where it's like there's no sound around. Um, Kevin Mitchell was sick. He had that support. Fucking, he did sick. Fuck yeah. Nashamore, the Celtic, great free kick taker, brilliant player. And Sinji Elmo. <whistles> like the way they made the pairs, they made it sick. Like out of the two, yeah, okay, they have faults between both of them. Out of the two, past 2021, mate, that's, I guarantee you, that's the best fucking football game you could get. Japanese did it sick because they don't just think about the graphics they also think about the artwork beforehand they really go into the detail and for that it's like that's it and the graphics of motion you can do these lovely long shots it just feels so much better to play on, on pairs oh hmm Tony Mitchell, brilliant. Oh, the leaves are green as well. It's not just a little yellow cab. Uh, it's stuck in a parking lot. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I can't remember it, but it's sick. I, don't, I won't do it well. Jody does, though. Sick. Canadian lady as well. She had the, the same disease as um, Audrey Hepburn. So it's basically, they, they gave it a medical reason for basically feeling that sick by the fact that people are obsessed with her, that fucking she just could not eat. Or that she ate it kept her really thin. I can't remember. Sick. Leap. Every right to be there for fear. We're just really jealous of her. It's just like fucking shit on her. Airheads are fucking crazy. Bob Bills. That's what Bob Bills trying to do. Oh, yeah. Um, completely new. She should write this song on, on the tour and fucking like rinses him off. Tove, first one to spite. I, I came back to him years later because I, 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 I'd been like groomed by my cousin. He's like, oh no, Danny, Danny McCoy. No, no, Bob Dylan. They just defend him to the bone. Like anything. Would come up with some fucking back ache for him. Uh, um, Tove's like, no. She's just literally ripped him laughing like fuck. <laughs> Clapping his hands, <laughs> the best part of the documentary. He says, yeah, yeah, it's hammering his hands. It's got a good version of it. Like, to, to, to put all the, I mean, not just them, it, Alan Ginsberg as well. He, like, Alan Ginsberg meant to be his mate, the poet. Alan Ginsberg says it's basically a documentary, what you should not do if you're a musician. 
like shit on all your mates and fucking shit on your loved ones. People you really love and your mates. No. And Allen Ginsberg left to like carry the luggage every day. And, and he did. And he was there before her. It was horrible. They treated him like a fucking slave. Allen Ginsberg was like Bob Dylan's major influence. He was mitt. He's like a uh, sick fucking beat poet from the fucking uh, 60s. We knew all of Jack Kerouac and shit like that was part of that crew. Bob Dylan was like, whoa, this guy's sick. <laughs> to see Jack Kerouac's grave with fucking um, Alan Ginsberg. Bob Dylan read some poetry. You know, it was the only moment where it's a tiny bit of redemption. Fuck, shite, man. It's horrible. As, as Alan Ginsberg point, points out, it's horrible. And Joni Mitchell, and Sharon Stone, and Joe Byers. He's like, why can't you fucking say this and that? It's been years and he basically said, you can't open up to me, Bob. You fucking spastic. Even though we're still backing you, because we feel sorry for you that much. You see how much of a loser you are if you need it that bad. Back my gears for my music because I have my consistent guitar. It's the one where it's like if all other guitars end up getting smashed, I've even got the gears for the music guitar because it's a little bit harder to play because I never change the strings. And the one strings are a bit hard to play, they're a bit stool. So you, you know, you want to buy a new guitar after playing so many songs. Great guitar though, brilliant. Got it for 50 quid off a get in your guitar, he took care of it. I, you know, I never smashed it. No, I did uh, basically. Um, uh, the last time, not the last time, the time before I was in the mental home, I was giving that guitar a fucking down. Um, just nicked a bit off the side. To make sure I didn't fucking fuck it. You know, just a corner. It still sounds alright, but pretty much. Just, um, yeah. It's such an honest name. It's like you tell him just playing on something like fours or something, getting high, chilling, and uh, you know, and playing some music as well. And like, I'm gonna go with this fucking Lotus Motion Sick. Yeah, it's a great name for a band as well. Oh yeah, shit, shit, oh great. It's a great version of Deep the Green Day Longview. I wouldn't cover that just because they did a better version than me. So I thought oh, I can't take that away from them. And it's such a humble guitar. I got off this year, uh, he's, he's a hard working man. He had a big, um, we had to go down to Bristol for it, and it was meant, that was like the one time, like redemption, the time, last time I went down to Bristol, I hated the only bit I liked when I saw Rod, Roger Daltrey. I thought he'd even just been paid off to do this. He was fucking, he, mate, he came from a like, fucking working class family. <laughs> Work, uh, worked at a mill, uh, he said, oh, I was either working a metal sheet factory, lose my fingers like Tony Lobby, or fucking um, playing the who. <laughs> what else are you going to do? <laughs> now, he was a street fighter, man. He didn't even have to sing about that. <laughs> that was obvious. Fucking, he even got uh, Pete Townsend, who was a nut, smashed up all his guitars and that. Rod Adults is famous for punching him out. Just got really angry one time, took it out on his mate. 
you know, they loved each other deep down, but they just really <laughs> just get in there with each other. Like they, you know, they wouldn't be like inadvertent with each other. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Sleeping around with Keith Richards, or oh, I'll make love with Marianne Faithfull, and then he slept with Keith Richards' wife. <laughs> Nobody's happy about that. Not even Keith Richards' wife. <laughs> But it was Mimp seeing him on the screen. You know, that was sick. I looked over this guy. I thought, shit, this isn't about more than anything. It's more about like how technically good you are. This guy was mint. <laughs> like, he did it just for chilling because he said, didn't really have anything else to do. Needed to just, he was waiting in the queue. So he just chill with his guitar and stuff, picking away and doing great tunes. Uh oh, <laughs> I could tell, couldn't even play uh, fucking bar chords, and I didn't really want to leave Shrewsbury to tell you the truth. But Gerard taught me some good shit. He did teach me some good shit, to be fair. And maybe maybe Roger is right, but I don't know. I'd like to say Roger just—it was a special time, was it not? Yeah, that's great now, but those then back then, that was a special time. Mark Williams' daughter did it. She was a really good guitarist. He was a mink guitarist. He was sick. That's why I couldn't learn from him because I'd just sit there and be like, oh my God, that's mint. And it was almost like I'd be like, with me eye egging him on to play more. And you think, oh God, look how much he loves how much I play the guitar. And then he'd think, fucking hell, come on, you've got to play. And I was thinking, but I can't help it, mate. You're sick. Just go on, just play some more. So I'd just be like egging him on to play his guitar, basically. And he was sick. You know, you could tell it was better just watching him play guitar for the lesson. Yeah, Nick Kurak somehow managed. He had a head on his shoulders. He somehow managed to power through. No, he didn't. He used to sit and watch as well. He brought himself an electric guitar because it's easier to hold down with the strings. And he um, learned it off his own back in his own time but we'd still come to the lessons to watch this guy play guitar because he was like it just as much as me this guy was sick um i think dan dan brown learned off his own back left in the end left school and moved to australia um <laughs> me nick Curry just egged this guy on to play guitar <laughs> he was sick it was just like he had a steve Vai guitar which was like uh put with blood his own blood i did say And he was sick, it was like men just watching him play guitar, basically. Took it out on him, but really that's the truth. He was just me. He had this perfect guitar, and you could tell, you know, it was just worth <laughs> watching him play. And he looked ready for it, like looked like all he did was the Ozzy Osbourne rapping. And he would have been fucking straight there. Off he went. Uh, 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 um, yeah. 